Wednesday with Colleen Vaughn, health coach, nutrition expert. And uh, we're going to talk about the realities of eating well and eating for longevity and immune system boosting requires you to cook. You, you have to, if, there's a lot of people out there that don't like to cook mm-hmm. or they're tired of cooking. So let's give them the reality check that whatever you have to, and now let's make it easy. So, and part of making it easier is meal prep on whatever day of the week you want that to be. Let's choose Sunday just mm-hmm. because we're, it's the first day of the week and give us some strategies for meal prep. Yeah. So I am um, the queen of like the seven minute meal because I, I personally don't enjoy cooking. Right, say that again, the seven minute meal. The seven minute meal. Um, basically. This is what people want to hear. Yeah. If it takes me longer than like seven minutes to put it together, then I lose interest and I'm on to something else that I feel like is more interesting. And Squirrel. So, seriously. <laughs> so um, I have found that there are three keys that have made me successful in my seven minute meal prep. Right. The first of these, number one, is that I batch cook my proteins. So I am not someone who likes to have leftovers of the exact same meal day after day after day. But if I batch cook a bunch of chicken or a bunch of ground beef or whatever that protein source for my meal is for the next couple of days, I can pre-portion those, put those in the freezer. And that way each day I can pull out one single serving, reheat, and I'm good to go. And so that is my number one time saver, because if you have the protein dialed in, that's what takes the longest to cook. So then everything else falls into place pretty easily. So that's number one. Number two is going to be your vegetable component, because that's the next, next thing on my plate that I'm always checking. And so I have a set few vegetables that I always buy fresh that are in my fridge. And then I have some that I always buy frozen. And so my fresh hits are uh, red or green cabbage. And I make that easy prep because I, I wash it. Um, you know, take the couple of leaves off, wash it. I put it in a bowl and then I can just literally with a big old knife, I just hack off whatever I'm going to use in that meal. And I can slice it up, start sauteing it and I can slice it pretty thin. So it cooks relatively quickly. I have that. I have zucchini raw because I can make zucchini noodles. I can do zucchini ribbons with a, a yep. cooler, which again, they cook really fast. And then I can pair that with my frozen stuff, which is always going to be frozen broccoli. Um, I tend to buy frozen cauliflower rice because again, it cooks super fast and it takes on the flavor of whatever I'm cooking it with. So very versatile. And then, um, I also tend to buy frozen mushrooms a lot because once you saute them with some onion powder and garlic, you can't really tell if they were fresh or frozen anyways. And so um, that's another one that I like to add in for texture and flavor. So between those couple of things, you know, I've got my protein done, I've got my veggies done. And now then step three is how do I season this so it tastes different each time? And so I always have onion powder on hand. I have garlic powder on hand. I have sea salt and then I have turmeric and I have, I use coconut aminos instead of soy sauce. You yeah. absolutely use soy sauce. And within that range of things, I can pretty much make anything taste the way I want it to taste. So yeah. if I want to add some tomato sauce, I add garlic and onion powder and some salt and it's boom, it's Italian. Or if I add a little bit of salsa, then, you know, I can throw a little bit of turmeric in there and some sea salt and I'm done. Um, you know, I can do all sorts of things, a little bit of lemon with the garlic and the onion. Tastes amazing. So all different flavor profiles, but the same. So it, what's interesting is you're talking about kind of batching and prepping components rather than what I think about when it comes to meal prep is I'm going to have this for dinner on Monday and this for dinner. On, like I'm, I'm planning all of that. You're just saying get the the proteins ready, get your vegetables ready, have your seasoning on hand and you can decide the seven minute manager meal, which is just beautiful. So seven minute meal, I don't care how tired you are. You can do seven minutes. You can do seven minutes. Yeah. And again, when the protein's already cooked, I do it in one pan. That's my other challenge is I hate doing dishes. Yeah. It's like, okay, what can I do in seven minutes? And I only use one pan. 
I love it's, that. Yeah, it's done. It's so easy. Is there ever a, do you find it ever a benefit to undercook your proteins so that when you recook them, you're not overcooking them? Or do you just not worry about it? So I used to think that that was a thing that I needed to worry about. I have learned that if in the morning I take that protein out of the, the freezer and put it in the fridge, yep. it defrosts on its own. So I don't have to put it in the microwave or anything like that. Yep. And then literally all I do is I just toss it into the skillet with the last few little vegetables to kind of heat it through. Yep. So I find that if I just I cook it the normal amount of time, chicken breast still stays nice and moist. Mm -hmm. um, beef doesn't get overcooked. None of those issues happen. So I find that's the critical piece though, is if you're taking it from the freezer and then microwaving it, then that becomes an issue. So if you can take it out in the morning, let it defrost in the fridge, you're good to go. I am a big anti-microwave protein. <laughs> it, just yeah. it just changes the, it's yeah. not good. Yeah. All right, so that is meal prep made seven easy. Seven minute one pan meals, man. That is what my, that is my jam. Seven minute one pan meal. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thanks Colleen. For sure.